father. You should have held on to this until the bitter end. It's time for Mojo Plays. Josh here, and today we'll be scrutinizing 10 of the worst weapons in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Looking for a little challenge? Maybe swap to some of the least impressive weapons in the game. Whether it be to weak stats or awkward special abilities that seldom aid the player in combat, these offensive tools left us wanting more. Also, it's worth noting we're purposefully covering several different types of weapons for the sake of the list not being entirely made up of those less than stellar predator bows. Before we begin, hit and blade that subscribe button so you don't miss more like this. Excalibur Surprised? Me too. Excalibur has some of the weaker stats in the greatsword category, and is one of the slowest weapons when compared with its damage output. The word you'll most often find describing the sword in the stone online is underwhelming. It comes with a perk that blinds nearby enemies after critical attacks, but it doesn't seem to stagger 100% of the time. You'll find even with a crit-based build that your foes can keep toe-to-toe -to -toe with your viking, and you're better off switching to something more lethal. It's not a bad pick for a weapon, but lacks the punch you'd expect from a piece of Eden. The big up here is that Excalibur can be acquired pretty early on in game, as long as you can kill three strong enemies. Have fun! Bear Claw. Our first and only bearded axe, its brothers and sisters are all solid choices for an all-arounder weapon, but this one sticks out for its unique visual flair and pitiful damage. Its special ability involves eating rations to temporarily increase your attack, which sounds ideal until you put it into practice. To get the full benefit of this ability, Eivor has to enter battle, take damage, retreat from combat to eat, then re-enter battle and be met with a boosted base damage of 46 when in comparison, your starting axe deals 60 out of the box. Despite its name, it is categorized as a raven weapon instead of taking from the bear tree. Plus, in its current state, the bear claw can only be purchased with real bucks. Or you could just not, as we promise you won't be missing anything. Voter's Bite Never seen anything like it. Much like the previous, you can't really go wrong with a Dane axe. They're better than many, yet nowhere near as strong as something like a spear or a scythe, and the voters just so happens to be at the bottom of that hierarchy. Wielding similar damage to Excalibur, this two-hander has a chance to drop a poison cloud, but only after a heavy finishing move, meaning that you'll still have to eliminate an enemy or two without any extra assistance, met with a slow attack output. That said, it can be situationally useful if you get lucky, but being that it's the reward for hunting all of the legendary animals, it's not much of a flex compared to what you'll have to wield in order to just get it. Mark of Soul. May I see your stores? Valhalla contains many bows to delight player's fancy, such as the Light, Hunter, and Predator styles. This mythical weapon, however, is a total mishmash mess of perks that don't complement each other at all. The Mark of Soul increases your damage when at low health, but being that an archer keeping their distance shouldn't be taking many hits, one would think this is a weapon to be brought into close quarter skirmishes. That's again reinforced by being classified as a raven weapon, which gives bonuses to close range and melee combat as opposed to stealth. Then explain to me, how are you supposed to hit anything in slapping distance when it's also designed as a predator bow that zooms in like times five? She's only obtained after reaching the settlement level of six, which takes, according to my research, a bazillion hours. Good day, Eivor. The fish are biting. Iron Star. Ugh. Ah, my choice of weapon for many in-game hours. The Iron Star will be your first taste in the Flail Department, a weapon type that is highly unique from your standard sword or axe. That said, the Iron Star isn't too much to ride home about. Its long animations for even a light attack can lock you into a state, making you an easy target. While there are plenty of amazing flails to unlock, this one will only increase your attack for 3 seconds after landing a heavy finisher. Meaning once again, you'll be on your own to take out a baddie before any bonuses kick in. 
If you want to give your enemies a fair fight or want to run through boxes while swinging this thing around like a helicopter blade, that is an option. Doppelhander. Another love of mine, this two-handed greatsword is about as weak as they come, but it does offer some substantial poison damage on fallen enemies. Obviously, this consumes far more stamina than is usually worth it, as you'll have to land consecutive heavy hits for anything to activate. Now taking this thing up to a zealot, even with all abilities charged, is just asking for a beatdown. Without the use of an offhand weapon that is much stronger, most battles will feel like a struggle. It serves as another introduction to a weapon type that will greatly alter how you play the game, but will inevitably be replaced unless you're a really loyal viking. Svipal Spears, the nearly unmatched choice for an overpowered Eivor with insane reach, speed, and of course, damage. After acquiring the ability to dual wield them, practically every boss in the game is going to go down at their tip, perhaps except for Savipal, one of the spears you actually have to pay for to get, found in the Valkyrie pack for about 20 bucks. While its damage is admittedly immense due to its weapon type, its speed is outclassed by most of its kind. Ultimately, it finds a place on our list due to its special ability of increasing what's called back damage, but only when your health is low. This is most similar to the backstab you can perform in Dark Souls, but due to its requirements, this spear asks for you to take significant damage, escape the confrontation entirely, and then sneak around to land a back hit without healing. Being that while in combat, the enemy isn't gonna spin around and let you get a free hit on them, this perk is entirely useless. Compare this to the Free Spear of Gungnir, which creates a force field to extend the weapon's reach. There's just no comparison, folks. Raise a glass in Odin's Hall. Kraken Shield. After buying a $30 starter pack, as it's known in the game, players will be given several items and weapons, most of which have highly stylized designs like that of the Kraken. So we've reviewed some terrible abilities thus far, but what could they have possibly slapped onto a heavy shield to turn it so lackluster? You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! And even worse, if you can believe it, the Kraken shield can't be upgraded by the blacksmith. In fact, it doesn't even show up as an option, unlike every other weapon in the game. Although some assumed it would be updated later, that doesn't seem to be the case, and it's fair to guess that it's simply an unfinished piece of gear. At least it looks cool, but I can't think of many armors in the game that it would suit, and honestly, with such low stats compared to the other shields, you're far better going empty-handed. Longbow The Predator style bows draw the short straw once again with the mundanely titled Longbow. It's found in a cave, lying in wait until you want to get it, and while its damage is mostly decent, its speed is quite lacking. The special ability perk that comes baked in is to unleash a smoke bomb after a close range shot. Um, not super ideal for a bow user trying to, you know, see the target. Plus, if it were a guaranteed instant getaway free card, that might be something. But 8 times out of 10, even after waiting the 30 second cooldown, which in this game is substantial, no smoke bomb will happen. Why? And why are you making us go close range again when it's zooming in like a telescope? You're always better off switching to a melee weapon with any other effect than trying to use this bow as its design. <laughs> Doc Elfar's Revenge. What do you do here? I am here to train you in the art of battle meditation. What's worse than a completely useless weapon? What would you like to wield the very least in battle, even less than a stick you found on the ground? A stick with a lot of splinters. That's right, the dagger named Doc Elfar, whose sole perk is to damage you for little benefit, especially because while well, fast, daggers have some of the lowest DPS in the game. Who would pick this over any of the axes? Not most. I mean, finding anyone actually using this thing in game is pretty uncommon already. Even those looking for a little more challenge would have a better time just not upgrading health on the skill tree. This double-edged blade, who's over our long quest, you should probably pass on. Or, trust me, just pick a different reward. Do you agree with our picks? 
check out this other recent clip from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.